mercy and peace. They are yours today. They are gifts to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, something that always shocks me every year is seeing kids that I've taught in school or in confirmation behind the wheel of a car. It just blows my mind. It happened this last week when the kids loaded up for uh, the youth gathering, and I saw some of the kids come driving into the lot. It's just like, what? <laughs> when did that happen? Parents, I'm sure you're shocked as well, maybe even more so to have your kids in driver's ed. Uh, but you know, they don't give out those licenses like water. You have to qualify for them, right? You have to be, first of all, old enough to be behind the wheel. And you have to put in all the time, all the hours. It's a whole lot different than when we got our license back in the day. They have to spend so many hours in the daytime and nighttime driving and all that kind of good stuff. And they also have to pass the test in order to qualify to receive a license. Our lives are filled with the need to qualify. I mean, think about it. Students have to qualify for a college. They have to qualify to receive scholarships, financial aid. You go to the bank to get a loan. You have to qualify for the loan. You don't just give it to you. You got to qualify. And of course, you have to qualify for a job. We are very much hoping that the Brewers qualify for the playoffs. We're very hope hopeful that the Packers will qualify for the playoffs as well. All these things, you have to qualify. Qualify means there are qualifications that need to be met. The dictionary is an awesome tool. It's good to look at those definitions here. Listen for some of these words that kind of are, are just good words when you think of these terms. Qualification. A quality or accomplishment that makes one suitable. That's a good word. Suitable. Action or fact of being eligible for. That's qualification. Qualified. Qualified. Officially recognized. That's kind of neat. As being trained. Certified. You know, believe it or not, there are qualifications to get into the kingdom of God. That's what we had in the gospel lesson this morning. The lawyer says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What are the qualifications? The question this morning is, do you qualify? for the kingdom of heaven. May God bless us today as we consider his word from Colossians chapter 1, reading now at verses 12 and 13. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Just about all of us at one time or another have heard those words. I'm sorry, you don't qualify. You just don't meet the qualifications. We become very much aware of our inadequacies, our shortcomings in life. And what happens when we get those is our instincts kind of kick in when we hear that. And we have to start thinking about what can I do to be qualified? What more do I need to accomplish in order to get qualified? And so those words kind of have that kind of, that drive to kind of do more, to be better. Back to the question this morning. The answer to that question, do you qualify? For the kingdom of heaven? The answer is the same. I'm sorry, you don't qualify. You just don't meet the qualifications. We are keenly aware of our failures and our imperfections. Even if no one else knows, we know our secret sins. 
and they are very clear to us. That still small voice of conscience is always there, accusing us, reminding us of our failures and where we've been wrong and how we have hurt others. And so that sin becomes very much in the front of our minds. Just as the Colossian Christians struggled with inadequacy leading to doubt, so too we struggle with the same. And that's why Paul, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, wanted them to know and wants us to know the good news. We are qualified. We are. Did you hear the good news? Paul says, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints. God the Father who has qualified you. The good news, the freedom, the joy, the relief. Folks, that is God's good news for us. It's what he's done for us. We couldn't meet the qualifications. We simply couldn't because it's not just about being good. It's not about being better. It's about being perfect. And we cannot. But God has devised a plan that only our Heavenly Father could devise to qualify you and me for the kingdom of heaven. God sent his perfect son to live the perfect life in our place. It's the sacrifice of the son. That perfect sacrifice that does away with all those sins of which we are aware and those we are not aware. Christ has died for all of them and has released us from them. It is Jesus, the Son of God, our Savior, who rose victoriously from the dead and has conquered sin and death and the power of the devil for us. God has qualified us. This gospel of Jesus Christ is all we need to qualify us for the kingdom. Don't you see? He's done it all for each of us, qualified for the kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Savior. And it's the Holy Spirit who has worked faith in our hearts to believe in all that Jesus has done. That we would be qualified for the kingdom. It's his work, not our work. Because you see, through faith in Christ, his perfect righteousness becomes our perfect righteousness. His victory becomes our victory. His inheritance becomes our inheritance through faith in Jesus Christ. Folks, God has qualified you for the kingdom. Paul writes about that in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5. Not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything as coming from us, but our sufficiency comes from God. We are made sufficient because of God. We are qualified for the kingdom because of what he has done for us by his grace through Jesus Christ, our Savior. 
that voice, that still small voice of conscience that accuses us, we need to hear a different voice. We need to hear the voice of Jesus who releases us from all our sins, who proclaims us forgiven, that assures us that we are qualified, not because of anything we have done, but because of what he has done for us. And that's the certainty we walk in every day. When I was looking at that text, that word qualified just blew off the page at me. We can't. But thanks be to God, he has qualified each one of us to inherit the kingdom of heaven. Through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have that assurance. Folks, I don't know how you came here today. I don't know what you're carrying. But I hope you leave with joy and thanksgiving in your heart. Because the assurance that is yours in Jesus Christ. That's what Paul says, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you. How can we not give thanks for all that he has done? Our life flows from that reality of what God has done for us. Everything we do is a response, a joyful, thankful response for what God has done for us in Christ. We love and serve others, not in order to qualify for the kingdom, but because we are qualified for the kingdom. Our life of stewardship, everything we do is not in order to qualify for the kingdom, but because we are qualified for the kingdom. Everything we do, our life flows from this great reality that we are qualified for the kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Dear friends, rejoice in this gospel, this good news that is ours in Jesus. Share this incredible news with people you know because there are many, you know them and I know them, who are trying to qualify themselves for the kingdom. And it's humanly impossible. It's only in Christ that we are qualified for the kingdom. We have good news to share, news of, of freedom, of joy, of life, because of Christ. And may this gospel continue to bring you joy and fill your hearts with thanksgiving that others may know the good news that you know that through Jesus Christ we are qualified qualified for the kingdom of heaven walk in that joy walk in that assurance for it's yours through Jesus Christ our Lord to him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all our human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in true faith unto Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen.